Owen! Hi, and welcome back to the channel. And this live match is the CRT Canal Pairs Qualifier, and it's the last chance saloon for me and Scott. We fished a few qualifiers. We've done well in them, but we've not managed to qualify yet, so this is our last chance. Now, this one is on the Langollen Canal. I haven't pronounced that right. I think it's pronounced Clangothlin. Somebody will tell me if I'm wrong. But I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, somewhere on the outskirts of Wales. It's a canal that's not fished very often. I've only fished it once before and that was on a canal pairs qualifier going back to 2016, I think. Me and my partner at the time, which was Ben Garbit, we qualified off it. I came up on my Facebook memories the other day actually and I had six pound odd that day and qualified, well, finished third in my zone. Ben finished third in his zone and we won it on the day. So a repeat of that would be nice today. Now, Scott's done the draw, Scott Dudson. And again, he's not let me down. He's put me on an MPEG. B13. It means absolutely nothing to me. I've never seen this bit of canal before, but it's an MPEG, so it's got to be all right. You all know what I think about MPEGs. So hopefully we'll be in for a good day. Now, this venue, going back from knowledge again from the last time I was here and talking to people you've got to get a quick start on it because you run out of fish really quick if you get two hours of catching that's a bonus so like i say it's feed your lines work out which is going to be the best early and catch as much as you can as quick as you can and then spend the last two three hours trying to get another bite so my plan is i've fed squat line to those trees to my left which is probably about two and a half feet deep and then it goes into the trees i've gone fur plumbed over into the trees and it's probably about four or five inches shallower so it's not a bad depth over to my right towards that cattle drink just on the edge of that rebed well at 11 meters towards that reed bed i've put some bread and then i've plumbed over towards the reed bed but i'm not going to do anything there yet and down the track i'm starting by just throwing casters there and then i've got some worms chopped up ready for when i feel i need to put some in if the caster doesn't work i should put some worms in and hopefully catch some perch so i've gone straight over on the grain bait line i'm using sonny blake's black roach with a bit of river in it and I've fed the 11 metre line and the 13 metre line. And I've just gone straight over the top of it. Fishing a fluoro pinky on a size 22 N10. The rig I'm using here is a 0.3. And then I've got a 4 by 10 set up for the further line. The rig I've got set up for the bread is a slim float in a 0.1 with a strung out shotting pattern. And that'll have a size 20 N40 on it. Now down the track, I've set up two rigs. Again, my favourite worm float, which is the Preston Power in half a gram. And I've set up a 4 x 14 F1 fine for fishing the caster and the maggot on. And that has got a size 18 natural N20 on. What's that, Roach? <laughs> Massive, are you? They get off to a decent start catching roach with pinky but then they pretty quickly go to very small fish so it's time to get off this line and have a look somewhere else and that one's fell off even and i've just noticed gareth roberts to my left has hooked a big fish down the track and the chap above him which apparently is a noted flyer uh, noted for catching skimmers on he's had a really good start on the bread and he's catching some great big roach. Great big things they are. So I'll be looking to see if I can catch him here, a couple of them. So I'll be looking to see if I can be lucky enough to catch some of them. 
So the next move is to have a quick look down the track before any bouts start coming. We've already had a couple of bouts through while we're setting up and the canal's moving quite hard. So it looks like there's a few bouts moving around the system. So any gaps in bouts, any quiet spells, I should quickly have a look down the track and see if I can catch on caster. So I've got it on a single caster and I'm running it with the flow. And my first bite's off this cracking lovely roach. You'll see it in a sec. It's absolutely gorgeous. There are not many canals I fish that produce roach this big. Look at that stunning fish on a single caster. We'll go in and try and catch another one of them. I've set up my four meter landing handle today because I'm sitting quite high off the water and I felt maybe if I've got a reach I might need to have a little bit more length on my landing there. But once I got started fishing, I felt that it wasn't really needed. But it's set up now, so it's there just in case. So I've had that quick start. I had a quick look on the pinky, had a few fish, some half decent stamp fish, and then started getting tiny ones. So down the track, nice roach first chuck. And my next bite, again, is another lovely fish. Any second now, there it is. That's a decent fish, that is. I was hoping it's going to be another big roach. But instead, it was a lovely big perch. Happy days. Cracking fish. Pound plus that one. It's a beautiful fish. And some of these fish, I just don't think they've ever been caught before. I was talking to Terry Nutt and he says he can't remember there ever being a match in this area. I was saying that, somebody else told me that that peg two to my left is a noted flyer. So it obviously does get fished. Whether it's club matches or what. I said to Scott before the match, if we both catch four pound, that'll definitely get us qualified. So I'm nearly there already. I reckon I had a pound or so on the pinky. I've had that roach, which was it's getting on for 12 ounce, plus that perch, which was over a pound. Oh, I'm almost there. Just need a few more fish and we'll be there, and I'll be there. My job will be done. So hopefully Scott can do the same. Once I started catching on the caster down the track, I found him up and I says, get yourself down the track. See if you can catch one of these bonus fish. That was a shame about coming through. Just as I thought this peg could be good down the track, a boat comes and just wipes it out. Never mind. I'll keep feeding it and I'll go and try on the other lines. So now I'm going to go and have a look on the bread to my right and see what's over there. See if there's any, see if there is anything over there. We're just over half hour into the match now, so I've got time to try a few things before the peg just doubtly dies, because I know it will. At some point, it will die. It just depends on how many fish it can catch before it does actually go.
light's a bit awkward on this line as well because you can see the shadow where I'm fishing there. Well, where I'm sitting, a lot of it is white water. And I'm really struggling to see the float. I'm okay when it's in the shadow of that reed bed. But then when it drifts to the left with the float, I'm struggling to see it. First fish on the bread's a goodie. I didn't expect that. We'll give it another go though. I'm using a six mil punch here. And like I said, this is a strong out rig. Still keeping those squats going in, which were fantastic squats, incidentally. Best squats I've had this year. I had to be careful that I didn't overping them. I've been used to this year having to really stretch that catapult elastic to get the bait over there. But today, I'm just going over a dream. So the next fish is an half decent roach. It's awkward shipping there behind me. So I'm to thread it through the hedge. Look at that clonking fish. Lovely stamp roach there, man. And I've got no fear of swinging them when I'm using a size 20 M40 because it's got a nice gap on it and you just don't lose anything off them. When you look them on there, they stay up. Another half decent roach. We had a few boats on the day and some of them came racing through. I mean, to my right, there's a bridge and it's a bit of an offset bridge and some of the boats there, how fast they came down to that bridge. And they can't see, the through, see what's coming through the other way either. So it's surprising that none of them actually crashed into oncoming boats because they couldn't see anything. I'm trying to pinky over that line there because I've had a couple of roach. I'm just trying to pinky over the bread to see if they'll have that fluoro pinky. I never had a bite on it, so quickly going to drop it over to my ground bait line, which is virtually the same depth, and see if I can catch on that rig over there. And it goes straight down the hole. And it's a half decent fish again. Good stamp roach, these are. Just about swingable look. Go on, my baby. Beautiful fish. That slow falling bite tempted that one then. We'll try it again. All the time I'm pinging squats over. I'm not pinging many over. I don't want to overfeed the peg because I know this peg is going to run out of fish at some point. I don't want to leave too much bait in there. With how much the canal was flowing though, you'd think you'd catch all day to be fair. I just don't think the head of fish are there. And what fish are there? A good stamp, most of them. 
again another lovely stamp roach using three's elastic three pressed and slip just through the tip section of the top kit it's in an album me to just about swing some of these roach in and don't forget I'm using a single pinky on a size 20 N40 here so I'm getting a really good hook hold on these fish so I'm not worried about swinging fish in and at the moment it's great fishing I would think I'm up to four pound easy now. So that's my target weight achieved. Anything above this will be a bonus. Having a nice little runner roach on this, it's actually the bread rig with a single pinky on it, obviously. And it's one a chuck. Look at them, they're cracking stamp fish. Real white builders. Peg seems solid at the moment. Just keep catching some fish. It feels like there's a few fish in the peg at the moment, so I'm just going to keep catching fish and keep putting them in the net. And I'm a good stamp fish, so I'm going to end up with half a decent weight as it's the way it's going. I still just don't know how long it's going to last though. But at the moment, it's one a chuck. You'll notice the last couple of fish, the size has decreased. As a sign that the peg's starting to fade. Keeping those casters going in down the track. Any lulls in traffic and I'll be back down that track. See again another little tiny fish. It's time to get off it I think. And that one's even smaller. Feels like the peg's on its way out already. So I'm going to try the other line now. Again on the pinky over the top of the bread. And see if I can catch anything there. And give that other line a rest for a bit. To keep feeding it and just hoping that some fish turn up again. And luckily there's a few fish there as well. Again the money's small.
switch between the lines again. This boat came through the bridge and he'd started to steer straight towards the far bank. I've managed to talk him into staying down the middle. Thankfully. Time for the top up. Gonna give it one more ball on the eleven meter line. Hopefully regroup some fish. Fingers crossed anyway. I'll refeed the bread line as well. And straight back over the top of that ground boat with the fluoro pinky again. Still throwing casters down the track. I think it's too late. The peg's gone. Strange because you you go in and you catch so well and you think this is going to be brilliant. And every time I've ever been up there, and I've only been up there twice, but I've spoke to lots of people about this venue, and they all tell you, you'll catch for an hour, hour and a half, and then it's game over. So anything I put in the net now to the end of the match, and there's still quite a lot of the match left, anything I put in the net between now and the end is all going to be a bonus. There's an half decent roach on the bread. I can only see two people to my left, which is Gareth Roberts, who's immediately to my left, and then that peg, which on the day was peg 11. Look at that again, stunning fish. He's catching, he's still catching really well. He's catching a lot of net fish. Spoke to him after the match. He's caught on bread and maggots. I've tried maggots throughout the day and never really caught anything on it. But as you can see, I've had a few fish on the bread.
There's another one. Another nice damp fish. Let's see how long I can get this line to keep going. Give the bread line a rest now and go back over onto the squat line, see if there's anything there. Keeping those casters going in. Again, another little fish. Took a while to catch that one. Doesn't feel like there's a lot of fish left over there now. I haven't put a section on and gone further in yet though. Further into the cover. There might be a few fish lurking in there. Back over to the right hand line. There you go, look, I'm struggling to see the flower now. It's just drifted into the white water. I'm just trying to perch myself so I can see in the shadow. I'm really struggling for bites on this line as well now. And I'm still struggling with my eyes because they haven't had my glasses back yet. Put Will Soldier on. We've had a little lull in traffic now, so I'm going to have me a quick look down the track again. Oh, mate. No.
So I'll get back on the pinky and have a look, see if I can catch any more. I've still not put a section on yet to go further into the cover. I'm trying to leave that as long as I can. Just seems like all that's left on that 11 metre line there, we're tying a little roach. So it's time to put some shot worming down the track. Now we've had a bit of a lull in traffic again. Drop some shot worming and see if I can catch any perch over it. Just a little portion of worm and a sprinkler casters. And see if we can do any good with that. I'm going to go straight over the top of it with a worm and see if I can catch anything on that. Again, the canal's still flowing quite good. The canal's still got a bit of pull on it, so I'm bouncing that worm around, holding on to it, letting it go, jigging it, all sorts, trying to attract a bite, picking it up, putting it down, letting it run, drag it back, just moving that worm about. Letting it run the full length of the peg again, and I've had a bite. Another net fish look. And he's going to come past us. He's got to get through that bridge. How's he going to do that? There's another nice stamp roach on the worm. See how many I can catch before another boat comes. Never damage the worm, so straight back in again. So it's time to get off that line.
keep looking to my right because there's a gang of kids just turned up in canoes and they've just pulled out at the side of the bridge, the other side of it, having a mess about, having a rest on the journey, I suppose. You see them later on come past me. It's quite a few of them. There's still the odd better fish about, look. I better put the net under that one. I can't pick him up. <laughs> nice stamp fish again. Oh, it's really big. Shot, 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 shot. Oh, you got snubbed in, you got snubbed in, yeah? Sorry? This old fella here. Right. It's got found me up. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Bless him. His missus was really upset. She was struggling to keep him under control. She said he's got dementia and he's just forgot how to drive his boat, bless him. He crashed into the far bank a few pegs through the bridge uh, in A section. And uh, some people had a few choice words for him. He can't help himself. But he went past me absolutely perfect. Under the guidance of his wife, that is. <laughs> Really struggling for bites now. It's time to go and have a look over to the cover now on my 13 metre line. See if there's anything hanging about over there. Just missed a bite, so there is something there. A few boats moving about. There we go, there's a fish. Just show you the trees. Not a bad stamp either. Just hoping I can get a run of these again. And there's another one. Slightly better, this one. That just about swingable again. Lovely fish. Nice little run this is. Time for another top up. Just making sure I've got my squats evenly distributed 
throughout the ground bait. I'm topping up my 13 meter line. I'm also going to put a ball to my right as well. Again on the 13 meter line. See if I can get a few fish lined up that way as well. I've put that in almost tight to the re bed. Well, that will settle. I'm going to have me a quick look down the track on the maggot again. And I'm going to prepare a little bit of worm again to feed the track. So I'll drop some more worm in. And go back in with a worm on the hook. And again, I've had another bite on the worm. Another net fish, and it's another roach. Lovely stamp fish. Look at that, beautiful. It's a great big roach. Ouch. Give me a good splash as well, that one. A Look at that. Absolutely there, stunning fish. Unbelievable. Not many, like I said, there's not many venues I go to that can produce roach like this. Yeah. Not canals anyway. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Just about to come off that line, thinking it ain't a piece of worm down. again.
oh, and the daddy next rough. bite's a little daddy rough. That's, the end of that, you know. that's not a good sign. So we get off that. Try and mag it over the top of it to see if there's any more of those about. I'm going to try running the maggot over the top of it and see if there's any more of those daddy rough about. See if I'll have a maggot. Just before another bout comes. It's a day trip about this is he's not hanging about. Not hanging about at all. So we'll go back over to the cover and see if we can catch any more pinky fish. There's one. Tiny little fish, but struggling for bites now. So anything's a bonus. And again, another bout. Let's see if I can catch another one over there. Busy canal this was today. Let's see if we can catch anything over that ground bait we put in on that 13 metre line to my right. It's not brilliant. I was just shipping back there, thinking that's that. I'm going to have a look somewhere else, and there was a fish on. I never even saw the bite. So I took a couple of inches off the rig, just in case. They were sitting off bottom, went back over there. But now more bites. Go back to the left hand side. It's just a case of going through the motions now. Drop it either side and see if you can catch a fish before having to move again. There's only odd fish left in the peg now.
bites are few and far between. But there is still the odd fish about, albeit mostly very small. And then all of a sudden you get a proper fish again. Another half decent stamp roach. Still managing to take the odd fish out. Another tiny fish. Another quick look on the right hand line, and now bites again. Get some more worm down the track. Last two times I've done it, I've managed to catch a big roach. Now bites this time. So back down the track on the way. See if I can pull anything out there. Before another bout turns up. It's getting pretty desperate down the track now. Really struggling for bites anywhere in the peg. Get a bit more chopped up. This time I'm going to add some grain bait to it, see if that makes a difference. Drop a few casters in, give it a good mix.
definitely I do too. Trying a bit more uh... See, I don't know what he's feeding me. I'm just looking, trying to see what he's fucking feeding. But I don't think he's fishing my dress. I'm going to make a little hard ball with that. Yeah. I can't work out what he's feeding. It's too far away. Making sure it's a nice firm ball. Not a big ball either. Let's see if that can add any fish to the peg. And I'm also going to do the same. 14 and a half meters to my left over towards the cover put a little ball of ground bait with some worms in i'm going to plumb it up first i haven't plumbed down there yet i'll plumb down to the end of the bush down there 14 and a half meters Let's see if I can catch anything over there. Things are getting pretty desperate now. So, I'm trying different things to try and put some extra fish in the net. Here's that bunch of kids. Look, had a good rest down there. They did. Right now I'll drop a ball over there. It's probably about an hour of the match left now and probably only have had two or three fish in the previous hour. So it's a bit desperate at the minute. Just going through the motions, keep going through the lines and just seeing if I can get a fish off a line. And the flap sits there motionless, it just doesn't move. Oh, there's a bite. Only very small though, look.
keep topping up with ground bait every now and then and keep trying to pull a fish into the peg. Time to go and have a look on the worm over where I've put that ground bait with worms in. See if I can catch anything there. And I have a bite. It's a daddy rough again. I suppose anything's a bonus this time of the match. At this point of the match. But the daddy rough are ever so small. There's another little fish. Just keep going through the lines, pulling off the odd fish here and there. Two in two chucks, bonus. <laughs> that one's minute. So one of the things I tried was dropping a bit of bread just down the shelf in front of me, in front of that tree there, just to see if I can get any bites there. And as soon as I've got in it, first bite I had was a net roach. So it shows there's still odd fish in the peg. I managed to hook the label on the inside of my landing net. Numpty. So just that one fish off that line. We've probably got an hour left of the match now and I'm really struggling for bites. So I've made the decision to just put some more worm in down the track and fish it out and see if I can catch me anything at all. And I have one bite on it. Any second now. Bang. Look at that. Proper bite. Proper whacked into a perch here. And it's a decent fish. Strip a bit of elastic out the side. My double sixes. Look at that. Cracking fish. Nice fish to end the match on. Got to be a pound and a half he has. Beautiful big perch. And that was that. So I ended up with about 60 fish.
First two hours were fantastic. Last three hours were pretty well for really. But that nice big perch at the end, absolutely awesome. Now that chap two to my left on peg 11, he's weighed 18 pounds and 12 ounces. You want to see the route he had in his net. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful net of fish he had. And then second in the zone up till now is eight pounds and 12 ounces. I wasn't sure I'd got that, but scales will tell. That's the eight pound weight on there. So he's just dropping a one on there to see if it goes nine, but it doesn't. It's a big eight. And that's it, eight pounds and 15 ounces for second in the zone. And I was also second in the match. So a great result. Unfortunately, Scott really struggled where he drew. He was on a very shallow peg and he's not managed to catch a lot. He's had a pound summit. Look at that for a net of fish. Beautiful net of fish. <laughs> there you go, there's the results. Second in the zone and second in the match. So, decent pick up. And we finished fifth on the day, pairs wise. So, we weren't a million miles away. We had 11 points in total, and you needed seven to qualify. Four points short. Never mind. No final for us this year. But there you go, never mind. Right, so if you enjoyed watching that, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, then please subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.